and she's happy to assist with whatever issues we may be having. So we're we're up to about 70 participants, and so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I know we don't yet have the speaker view, but I really appreciate all the work Jamie has been doing on the back side of this, trying to get us set up and moving. Again, welcome. This is uh, a part of our July meeting for Human Resources Town Hall. Uh, as you all know, we had previously done forums about uh, on a, about a quarterly basis, but after doing a survey during this this COVID event, we were informed by our uh, HR employees that they preferred for us to do something uh, around a town hall and do it more frequently. So this is our July town hall, and I am so happy to be able to have with us today as a part of this town hall, our senior vice president for finance and administration and chief financial officer, uh, Holly is joining us today to, to, to speak on a number of topics, but um, so thank you, Holly Crawford, for being with us today. Thanks, Tony. Um, is this, did you want me to kind of give a couple of remarks and then open it up for questions or you had some pre, pre yeah, questions, I would, right? I would appreciate you giving us some remarks. Um, and um, you know what, before you, you do that though, I'd like for the, uh, for the agenda slide to go up so that people could see what it is we're gonna be uh, talking about today. So Holly's gonna speak to us, then we're gonna, uh, do some Q and A with while Holly is still with us. Then some strong stars, service anniversaries, new employee introductions. We're going to talk about the HR engagement, uh, and then uh, we'll close for today. So again, thanks again, Holly, for being with us, and um, I would appreciate hearing from you about where we are financially. Okay. Well, thanks for having me, Tony, and thanks for inviting me, and thanks to everyone on the call for all your hard work and service to the university throughout this uh, very difficult um, situation that we've all been going through. I know everybody um, has been working hard, working remotely or being challenged or working in the, you know, in the medical center or um, it, it's just a difficult time for uh, all of us. And I greatly appreciate everyone's um, support and uh, being here and being part of the university. And as HR professionals, it is so critical. Your jobs are so critical um, all the time, but especially during uh, a crisis uh, pandemic when, when everybody is feeling very uncertain and stressed, um, your jobs are so important to ensure that employees understand what they need to be doing, where they should be going, how to work from remotely, how to be working uh, in the medical center with the uh, appropriate PPE and supporting, um, or if you're on campus and supporting students that are, have, have had to remain on campus and faculty and staff. And, you know, I just think that um, your jobs are, are critical to ensuring that employees feel like they're being heard um, and being uh, helped. And uh, again, I thank you. Um, so just a little bit about um, the finances. Um, so we were tracking uh, on budget uh, through February at both at the medical center and the, and the academic divisions. Um, we were going, we were going to have a, a, a very um, good financial year. Uh, but of course, as everyone knows, we hit mid-March and under the New York State Pause Act, the university started preparing for the COVID-19 patients in all our hospitals, as well as um, we had to close down the, the academic programs in the, on the River Campus and the Eastman School of Music. Um, we Im immediately started putting in place um, mitigating uh, expense actions, which you would have all seen, like uh, late March. So we started immediately to say, and, and this is what a lot of our uh, peer institutions did as well, holding open um, 
positions, so not filling any non-essential open faculty or staff positions, requiring approval for overtime and using existing employees to reduce contract labor, uh, holding any new capital uh, spending for the first, at least the first 90 days, and stopping non-essential <clears throat> capital projects in progress. So those of you who are on the River Campus would have seen that the Sloan Performing Arts Theater has been stopped um, while work on the strategic plan projects in the Medical Center, the ED, Inpatient Tower, and the Orthopedic Center is going uh, forward. It's still at a very uh, a, a reduced pace. So we're continuing planning for those, but we've really pushed pushed a lot of that work out for the at least those first 90 days. Um, we also asked all non-essential, non-salary expenditures or commitments um, to be held like travel and conference and consulting, catering, supplies. And in fact, we're asking everyone to continue to do that um, until we know what this fall looks like. Um, we just cannot um, afford to open up uh, expense, uh, ex expenditures uh, at this point in time. Uh, we, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about the, the, what the fall is looking like right now. Um, as you know, we had to eliminate the annual merit program for fiscal year 21. We did reduce senior salaries, uh, senior leadership salaries for fiscal year 21. Uh, we started that in May, so it was actually for four, at least 14 months. Um, we also have now reduced uh, faculty salaries as well um, uh, across the institution for anybody who's making over 280. Uh, we re reduced those sal salaries as well and, and the faculty um, worked very hard on, uh, they had a special committee reviewing kind of what, what recommendations they may <coughs> make to help uh, share in the cost savings uh, as you know, we furloughed um, certain staff across the institution from mid-May through August. And then just most recently announced that we reduced the retirement plan contribution, um, uh, the second piece of the recurrent contribution. So we're computing, com contributing, excuse me, it's been a long, long week, long day, um, contributing 6.2% up to the uh, 100K. Um, and then stopping the contributions after that. And I will say that, you know, we watch very carefully what our peers are doing and our peers are doing many of these same things. Uh, many of them have stopped their retirement contribution altogether, but we really felt that it was very important to continue the contribution at least up to the 100K to help um, all of our employees um, with, this, with their retirement savings. Um, so we, did, so we did this expense reduction immediately. Uh, we have gotten some governmental funds. Um, we had um, about, I think, 114 million of government grants that have come through, uh, as well as another 199 million of loans, which are repayable. Um, our government relations group is trying to work on um, trying to see if that could be paid, it's supposed to be started to be paid back in August. Um, so that's helped our cash position somewhat towards the end of the year, uh, the end of this fiscal year 20, but as soon as those governmental loans have to be paid off, we're, gonna, we're going to um, you know, have, have a, a crunch on our cash. So we're trying to ask the government if we can either get those loans converted into grants or have a longer period of time. Um, so that's kind of what we've been doing through COVID. Um, the results through May, um, we, we just closed June, so I'm not, I don't have our June results, um, but we had lost revenue through May of about 336 million. Most of that was in the patient care area, about 313 million was in the patient care area, and about 23 million in our academic divisions. Um, that would have been offset somewhat in June because of the reopening of the clinical operations. So we had been anticipating, this had assumed, um, this was a projection through year end, we had assumed that clinical operations would be up through uh, about 85% of pre-COVID volumes. Um, and it was actually, Adam tells me that they were uh, actually closer to 90%. So that lost revenue will have been reduced somewhat by the end of the year. 
Um, and again, that was offset by some CARES Act funding as well as some loans and of course all the expense savings that I just outlined. Um, looking forward, uh, for I'm sure you, a lot of you have seen the reopening plans that we have posted. Um, we are anticipating for the academic divisions to open August 26. We plan right now to have a residential campus um, with both hybrid and in-person um, uh, teaching. Our enrollments looked good. Um, all the way up until I think this past week, and now we've started to see some deferrals. So uh, we start, we're starting to see some students say, uh, I wanna defer until the spring semester, I wanna defer until next year, um, which is making a, a, you know, me a little bit nervous about our net tuition, so that's why I need to keep these expense controls in place until we really know what our, um, who's coming, what students are coming in the fall, and uh, what net tuition we're going to collect. So uh, again, we were pretty much on target um, for net tuition uh, through, I would say, um, mid-June, and now we're starting to see a little bit of, of melt in those students. So it really, uh, and until we see who's on campus on August 26th, I really won't know uh, what our, our tuition revenue is going to look like. Uh, as I indicated, the patient care revenue is coming back much more quickly than they had anticipated, about 90% of pre-COVID um, uh, volumes at this point. Um, our whole reopening plans are, are very robust, and I mean, uh, Tony and I and many other senior leaders are on a, a call, or have been on a call every day, which we've now reduced it to a couple, day, couple times a week, but our CURT reopening plans, um, talking about um, residential halls, dining, how are we going to socially distance um, students in the residence halls, in the dining facilities, in classrooms, how are, how are faculty going to teach, all our cleaning plans, masking. Um, the, last Thursday, I went through Wallace Hall, uh, which was a prototype for all the signage that we're putting up about uh, social distancing, wear your mask, use hand sanitizers, where hand sanitizer is going to be placed, and all of that was a prototype for other buildings you know, on the academic campuses. I know the medical center um, has been operating through this um, uh, the pandemic, um, in, you know, completely uh, fully functional, but the, the academic campuses have been closed down, so we have to reopen those buildings safely and put all the signage up and make sure that um, as, as students, faculty and staff come back, um, that we're keeping them safe. Um, as far as coming back, uh, that's one of the things that um, I was on a call last night with my peer uh, CFOs. Many institutions are doing the same thing uh, as far as staff saying, please continue if you can to work remotely. That's the safest thing for you and that's the safest thing for um, our, st our students and, and faculty. Um, uh, the other thing that we did a little bit differently is that um, we're asking our students to come back on August 26th, but then we are going to send them home before Thanksgiving. Instead of usually what we would do is um, send them home, they come back after the holidays uh, and stay through to like December 18th. Now they are going to all leave campus uh, right before Thanksgiving and finish their semester online. Um, that way we're not sending everybody away and then bringing everybody back and not knowing where they've traveled to. Or, um, so this way we can try and keep um, you know, the, the virus at bay. Um, so that's, I think, Tony, that was kind of some of the things that you wanted to talk about, the finances and kind of our reopening plans. Yes. Uh, anything a, I missed that you wanted me to cover? Uh, that was a great summary, uh, Holly, and, and we really appreciate it. I know that our folks had a number of questions you led into one of the main things that people wanted to know about, which was, uh, you know, about uh, work from home and, and those kind of things. So. Uh, I guess myself and Kathy and, and you can talk some more about that. 
-hmm. And uh, I think one of the, the aspects of that is certainly, as you articulated, we want people who can work from home to continue to work from home for now. We do want to try and plan to get folks back to, into the office at some point. And so stay tuned for some of that information. I guess our target is August, uh, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how that's gonna work with making sure that people are safe and, and that we get information out on masking requirements. We are planning to do uh, some, uh, have a work from home policy that will be published as well. As in, and uh, we have a group of people working on that. And we have a, um, uh, we're working on a survey that we should have out in the next couple of weeks that will get a, a list of additional information. So we will be able to do the best uh, job we can as far as work from home. Uh, I think Kathy Gallucci may have some additional information about, about some of those items. So um, Kathy? Sure. So the remote work uh, survey is ready to go out. Um, we're we're getting it out as we as we get the names in and coordinated with those folks who who either are out now or were out before. Even if people have been returned, we still want feedback. We want to understand what went well. We want to understand um, what didn't. What tools were needed. We want to get better at communicating remotely, and so we're trying to understand what areas are doing that well, where um, individuals don't feel as connected, um, what can we do to, to help folks feel more connected to their coworkers, to their leader, um, to the departments and people that they support. So um, that survey will be coming out and we, we really want people to fill it out honestly so that we can share um, across the university um, how, we might, how we might be better at at remote working and supporting remote workers. I think we want to understand um, what positions we might be able in the longer term to be more flexible related to remote work. And so um, we are working on a remote work policy. It has gone through a couple of reviews um, and waiting um, to add in a little bit more feedback that we just recently got and then we'll be sending that over for Holly to take a look at as well as the other senior leaders. Um, I think additionally, we want to understand um, our flexible work policy is is somewhat um, antiquated, and so we want to brush that off and see if we can um, take a look at um, our flexible work policy and make that more flexible um, and more uh, inclusive of of different options. So. Um, working on all of those things, I think it is um, difficult, as Holly um, mentioned, with things changing. We know things are changing in states across the country, and that that um, while New York State has seems to be in good position, I think we're all wondering how these other states and, and what's happening there is going to impact us, because certainly our students come from a variety of places, and so. Um, more to come with that, but we know that it's difficult for you to be home um, and not knowing exactly when um, we're expecting to return uh, you to return to campus. But we invite you certainly to reach out, have those conversations if you're feeling anxiety, um, to certainly have conversations with your leaders and, and we're available for that as well. We're doing every everything we can um, to to give you as much information as we have. But as you know, the situation is, is, is somewhat fluid right now. Another aspect of, um, the, of things, and I think other questions that have come up is working, when, it, when you talk about working remotely, now people are asking us about working out of state and out of the country. And, and uh, if you have questions like that, don't hesitate to reach out to a business partner or myself or Kathy, because there's a lot of legal requirements for people working outside the state of New York. There might be tax implications to that. There might be unemployment implications that, and we may need to be registered in the state in order for somebody to work out of state. There are probably about, <clears throat> I think there's about a dozen states that we currently have people working in, but we look very closely at each of the state requirements for doing that before that allowing that to happen. And, and so, um, if you have those kind of questions or people raise those kind of questions with you, don't hesitate to reach out to myself, Kathy Minor, Kathy Gallucci, um, 
we work with the legal department to see what kind of uh, requirements a particular state has, whether we have to register, whether it means additional taxes need to be paid to the state, or when I say taxes, maybe unemployment or leave or disability types of issues, uh, not to mention <clears throat> that, you know, there are benefits issues that might arise for the employee working out of, out of state. We have tried to discourage people from working out of country. As you might imagine, during this uh, COVID uh, pandemic, we've had some faculty members ask about working out of country. And again, there's a lot that goes into that uh, that people don't really understand. Most countries want you to be a, a registered to work in their country and will ask uh, the uh, organization and they don't, they may not look at us as a not-for-profit. They will ask uh, for um, for money for allowing registration in their, their country. So a lot of uh, to go that goes into those kinds of issues. So if you have those kind of things come up or come to you, please don't hesitate to reach out to us about some of that. Another uh, issue that I know that came up had to do with training opportunities and um, within my path and you know we've been using my path and the Kathy can speak to this as well but we've been using my path to try and get people up to speed on everything from uh, what this COVID pandemic uh, is is doing to moving uh, even moving clinical folks around uh, and if they have been out of um, clinical spaces for some time getting them back up to speed on those kind of things but we also uh, want to use my path and as as a continuing tool um, and grow the uh, use of that tool as well. So one of the things that we've done is to hire Michelle Lewis as a director of learning and development on the uh, for the River Campus. You all know Stephanie Van Bako has been leading that effort at the medical center with a lot of the compliance training that goes on in the medical center and. And also we've been developing uh, some leadership development courses, but also Michelle will be uh, working on how to best utilize the tools that we have uh, in my path to create a learning environment for uh, more people. So that's part of what her, uh, what she'll be working on. Um, Kathy, any other uh, additions to the way we're going about using or expanding my path. Uh, no, the only thing I would like to do is just recognize the my path team because we have had to make a lot of changes and they have had to add a lot of modules, as Tony mentioned. Um, certainly, we've had to to orient people to to competencies that they haven't used in a while, and the my path team has been incredibly flexible and very supportive as we as we have had to make pretty changes pretty quickly. So I certainly, um, I think, speak for all of us that we really appreciate the work there. And then I also, thank you, Kathy, and I know another question that has come up, has, the, has um, this issue of how we improve our systems processes to make things more online. And certainly we've been working at that now for some period of time and have put several forms online and will continue to work at putting others online um, as you might imagine, the changes in the workplace that have been created by this pandemic has, has heightened the expectation there will be more that you can do online. And certainly the meeting that we're having today is an example of that. So um, we will continue to work at, at, at doing that and doing that better and, um, and making, it, uh, making our online resources more accessible to everybody. And, and more helpful to everybody. And with that, I think if Jamie is moderating, or if, I don't know if she's received any questions, or if Sam, if you've received any questions, but if there if there are any other questions we'd like to we'd like to address from the myself or or Holly, um, uh, please let us know. Tony, this is Sam. We haven't gotten any questions at this time, but I think you did a great job of addressing the questions that came in in advance of the meeting. Um, and if there are any that come in uh, later in the presentation, we'll be sure to record them and we can get uh, answers out via email 
uh, post presentation. Fantastic. Well, again, I want to thank Holly for joining us and for giving us a summary. I think a lot of us had not were not aware of about all the different aspects of uh, what goes into trying to get keep the uh, this institution running and running smoothly and financially viable. So thanks, Holly. Uh, you're welcome to stay with us if you would like. But at this point, we're getting ready to go into our employee recognition programs and and uh, just appreciate you, you being with us. So, Thanks, Tony. Thanks for having me. I do have to drop off. Um, we are doing a bond issue, and I've got a lot of work to get that done. Um, just thanks again, and congratulations to all the um, award winners and strong stars, and um, have, you know, have, a, have a great weekend. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Holly. Bye-bye. So let's talk about some of the um, uh, employee recognition. We're going to start with uh, Strong Stars. As I take a look at this list, it is an astounding uh, and uh, truly wonderful example of the, the tremendous work that our team does for this institution. And I want to... Um, I, while I, I'm not going to try and call out every name on this list, I just wanted to sit here for just a moment so that you all can see some of the fantastic um, work that goes on out of the Human Resource Department. Uh, I know that as you look at this list, you will see a, a, a friend of yours, a colleague of yours, someone that's in your workspace. And so when you get a chance, um, don't shake their hand or hug them just yet, but wish them very well and thank them for their service to the University of Rochester and HR. And thank each and every one of you um, uh, Strong Stars participants and, and honorees. Now we get to talk about service anniversaries. And congratulations on your service. This is, um, you know, we're um, still recognizing 10, 15, 20 years and beyond, but I hope that you all know that we started recognizing five years of service with a keychain recently. So um, I don't see the five-year folks up there because my name should be up there for the five-year group. So, uh, but I know that there are others as well, but congratulations to Erica, Tom Dunbar, Daniel Gibson, and I had no idea Daniel had been around 15 years, or Sandra for that matter, and Denise for today's prize of 20 years. They must have all started here out of high school or something, but that's fantastic. Thanks for your service, folks. And we have a few new employee introductions. The first one I get to do, and I really have, have already done this, Michelle Lewis is the new Director of Learning and Organizational Development. Um, I was able to get Michelle in under the wire with regard to uh, before they froze all of the hiring, and I'm so glad that I did because she's been a wonderful help in um, with many of the activities that are going on, whether it's with my path, her understanding of, of how to utilize uh, different training platforms and to expand them and uh, coming to us from, she was in the facilities department, but coming to us with a wealth of information and knowledge about ways to improve our learning and organizational development uh, function. So welcome, Michelle. And then I think there are a couple people that in the medical center learning and development. Yeah, so Tony, we're gonna turn it over to Karen Scott to introduce some new folks in her team. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Karen Scott, and I'm pleased to welcome even more folks to learning and development. And uh, Christine Dieter started back in January. She comes to us with about 15 years of workforce learning experience behind her. And her focus is going to be on staff development at the medical center where she'll be working on 
putting together and offering some skill development classes for our staff members. She'll be working with community organizations to create a talent pipeline for our hard to fill positions. And she'll also be establishing some career navigation services for those that are looking to grow their career and advance at the medical center. So we're excited to have her with us as well as to welcome Kim Darty, and she is our regional instructional designer and she is going to be doing instructional design work with our regional hospitals in the area. So we're very pleased to have both of them with us. Thanks, Karen. Um, I think Michelle Hill is going to introduce Kim. Thanks, Sam. Um, so yes, uh, Kim Sedlet joined the Office of Total Rewards March 30th as a senior compensation analyst. She actually joined our office after we began working remotely, so she successfully completed her onboarding remotely, and we were able to work out some of the kinks on that. Kim joined us from Paychex, where she was a senior compensation analyst, and she also worked at Rochester General Health System and Excellus in compensation as well as benefits. Kim has her Certified Employee Benefits Specialist, the CEBS designation. Um, and uh, I had asked Kim, and Kim's on furlough this week, so she doesn't even get to hear that we made the, the introduction, but um, I had asked for some personal information on her to share with the group, seeing how um, nobody's actually really had the opportunity to meet her in person. But, uh, you know, Kim is married. She has an eight-year-old daughter that she uh, successfully um, completed this year's schooling for. So she's a teacher as well as a compensation expert. She said she enjoys reading, music, and spending time with family and friends. So hopefully at some point in the future, we'll get an opportunity to meet Kim directly. Thanks, Michelle. I give a credit to any parent who also served as a teacher this year and successfully got their kids through the school year. It's very impressive. Uh, I think Kathy Miner is going to introduce Jody. Kathy, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, there you are. All right. And now we can. We're not hearing you, Kathy. Are you able to hear me now? Yes. All right. Let's. Third time's the charm. Jody Penoyer. Now everybody knows your name. <laughs> Three times. Uh, so she's our office coordinator, came to us through Strong Staffing. So we were fortunate enough for her to be here helping in another capacity when Mary Ellen Men uh, Manellis retired. So she took that role. Um, she, before she came here, she was an executive assistant for a local jewelry um, corporation. and a placement specialist and office manager for a nanny firm. And uh, a fun fact about Jody, uh, she's probably holding her breath about what am I going to say? Um, but I noticed that she noted that she is a DCA certified in diamond and color gemstone. So that's pretty unique. Oh, that's interesting. But thank you, and now we get a chance to move on and talk about HR engagement, and Sam is going to talk through this for us. Yes, yeah, thank you, Tony. Uh, I just wanted to give an update on the HR engagement committee that has been formed. Um, I know uh, it was introduced, I think, very briefly at the last town hall, but we were running short on time. Um, but I just wanted to thank everyone who uh, responded to the survey that we sent out uh, post town hall and gave us some really good information about what types of things they might be interested in participating in to have some more connection and uh, you know, just hear from more of your colleagues um, in this unusual remote work time and, and with people, you know, some at the medical center on campus and some at home. Um, we have identified a few activities that we'd like to, to bring to the group. Um, and so each committee member is sort of taking on uh, something that, that they're going to put together and they're getting the details uh, in the works now. So more information will be coming very soon, but we, we used all of the feedback that you all provided to us. 
Um, and the next slide actually has the committee members listed again, and I just wanted to put that out there one more time and uh, ask anyone to feel free to reach out to any of these folks um, with any questions or comments or thoughts, or if you would like to join and help out or be a part of any of this, uh, you're more than welcome to. This is the group that has been doing some of the planning um, for the activities that are to come. Thank you so much, Sam. So, you know, um, we have gotten through our, our agenda. I thought we would be well near the top of the hour by the time we got through this point of the agenda, but we, we've done, uh, we've been pretty efficient today. Maybe we're getting used to doing Zoom meetings. I want to say again how much uh, I appreciate the work of the Human Resource Group. You all are really uh, the glue that's kind of holding things together. I know that we have people who are working on policies and, and procedures. We have people who are answering questions constantly uh, about everything from ergonomics and and what equipment they sh that should be used, which you know is not even an HR function necessarily, to how to better understand uh, working from home and how to to handle uh, children while you do it and. And can you make sure that our supervisors are patient with us if there are times when, um, uh, when you know, there are interruptions in a call? So you all have been doing some tremendous work uh, to try and keep things moving with the University of Rochester. When you think about all that we've been through in terms of furloughs and layoffs and um, the, and still, you know, people backing each other up to make sure we get the work done um, and to even have, uh, you know, 85 of your colleagues on this call today is gratifying and it speaks so highly for this, for this HR department and this team. So again, I want to thank you. I, um, I put on my Hawaii shirt today just so I could, uh, uh, you know, make sure that I, that it, I hopefully put a smile or a laugh on somebody's face because this has been a very difficult time in the life of this university and particularly busy and difficult in HR as we've had to learn new skills. I mean, HR, I think I said this last month, but I'll say it again. <clears throat> HR opened a child care center during the pandemic. So, um, and we've done so many other fantastic things to help this, uni this university and this medical center continue to, to do what it does best, which is uh, to take care of our patients and their families, to teach uh, students, to, to heal, to create, uh, you know, getting researchers back in labs, all the things that, it is, that goes into being a world-class uh, university you know, I think the ability to do that emanates out of the HR function. And of course, I should think that way. Again, I really appreciate you all. Uh, I will stop for just a moment and see if there are some questions that have come in that maybe <clears throat> we need to take on. If not, then I will let you redeem a little bit of your time back this afternoon. Uh, Patrina, I'm not sure if you see any questions. I haven't seen any questions come in. Um, I did want to acknowledge, uh, Tony, that um, you are aware, obviously, that we had a couple of questions submitted before the town hall related to diversity. Uh, and we just wanted to sort of acknowledge that we did receive those. And because we had Holly on today and, and knew that our focus would probably be a little more on return to work issues, um, that we are going to take those and, and bring them to another town hall where we can spend much more of a focus on diversity and inclusion and um, the new office that has been uh, put together in the last year or so. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. Right. We're going to hopefully have our chief diversity officer uh, join us for the next uh, town hall and be able to speak to some of the issues that she's working on. Um, you know, and I'll just give you a, just a flavor of it because I want you all to tune in to the next town hall. And it's that, you know, a year or so ago, we were talking about having a respectful workplace. And 
you know, you get a new chief diversity officer and she begins to teach you that respect is different things for different people. And you have to be very specific. And if you want to be in a, a, a place that's anti-racist, you have to teach people what that means and how to do that. So she's going to be talking about that hopefully at our next town hall. We're trying to lock that down based on her schedule. So, um, so look forward to, to um, having you all back again for another lively discussion. It's hard to be lively in, in, in this format, but, but you know, it feels good to be able to speak to each and every one of you. Um, any other parting comments from um, Kathy? or Katrina or Sam, the things we need to cover? So Tony, a question just came through. Mm -hmm. uh, it was mentioned back to the office in August. Is there a priority list for who will, who will be returning to the office, such as campus, med center, and offsite locations? If I understand the question, uh, is there a priority for who will be returning to the campus? Um, well, well, we'll do it as some, somewhat as need dictates. Again, we, if people can work remotely, we want them to be able to do that. But um, we, we, even during this whole pandemic, we've had some people who could not. And, um, and so the folks who are closely associated with those workplaces, we're, we hope to get back in uh, first. But um, and then it may depend on what building you're coming into and if they're ready uh, with all the signage that, that Holly talked about, making sure that we can um, keep people safe. So the building may, may be a determining factor and then the, certainly the work that needs to be done and, and um, the support that we need to give to those others who are coming back into the, uh, their facilities will be some of those factors. But thanks for the question. Well, with that, I think that I will give you all 15 minutes back in your day. And thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Mm -hmm.